Hey guys, it's Drew Brashler with DBB Audio. Today we are gonna be diving into the monitor section of the X32 Mix app. Now, if you are using the iPad as your main work surface for using a console, and you want to have some sort of monitoring capability, I would definitely recommend getting an in-ear setup, say uh, something wireless like the Shure PSM series or the uh, Sennheiser uh, IEM 300 G3s, something that's gonna give you a wireless in-ear setup. And that way you can actually solo stuff using the Mix app and it'll still come in through your ears. Now another thing, if you're wanting to actually use the talkback function of the app, you'll probably wanna get a wireless microphone as well. So go ahead and just get some cheap wireless microphone, something that's gonna be uh, practical for you and wire that into the external mic of the talkback section of the board and that way you can carry that around with you, still have some sort of talkback function to be able to talk to the band members on stage but then still still not be tied into the actual console itself. Now, if you are using a wireless in-ear setup, make sure that you wire that into the control room monitor output of the board and not the main left right uh, on one of the aux outs uh, or the XLR outs. Now, let's go ahead and just dive into this monitor section. So we have four different tabs up here when we hit our monitor button up here. We have our monitor, talkback A, talkback B, and our oscillator. So monitor is going to be our main section for the monitoring. So we have our monitor levels, which this is just going to be the outputs going from the monitor section. So this isn't actually soloing um, meters. This is literally just the output of the monitor section. So if we take our monitor level and turn this down, we'll see that our meters go down as well. And so we do have a monitor level that we can raise up and down as well as muting that if you want to as well. The monitor settings section is a really awesome place because we can choose where we're wanting to actually monitor from. So we can monitor from our left, right bus, uh, left, right plus mono. We can do left, right pre-fader or after fader listen, as well as our aux um, five and six and seven and eight, giving us the ability to monitor, say, our DAW if we wanted to. Our source trim is basically just going to be an adjustment up and down trim level, as well as being able to mono the whole entire monitor section. So we can mono it or have a stereo spread in our ears. Uh, the next section here is pretty useful if you're using near fields at the console or if you're wanting to delay the sound of the monitor section from the PA. So say you're 60 feet away from the PA, if you're using the in-ears for monitoring or some near fields, then we have the ability to go ahead and delay ourselves and have the time of your monitor arrive at the same time the PA would be as well. And that way you're not listening to the snare crack in your ears and then hearing it a split second later once the PA sound hits you. We can also dim the attenuation. So this is going to be, if we're soloing something, um, we can dim this. Now this is going to be tying into the PFL. So we can dim um, either by pressing this and raising this up or down if we want to just have a lower volume for uh, a specific period of time, or we can use dim for PFL. Now if we go and solo a channel, it will actually dim by this amount in our ears. And that way if we're listening to the snare drum that's almost you know, clipping, it won't kill our ears when we go and solo something with a PFL. Now we have solo options here. Exclusive means that whatever we solo right then is going to be the exclusive solo. So it's going to cancel all the other solos. Solo follow selects basically means that if we go select a channel, the solo will go follow that. So if we go and select say the kick drum and we had the electric guitar soloed at that point in time, the solo would move to the kick drum. And we have our channel solo AFL, um, and this is going to be if we wanted to listen to a specific channel soloed after the fader, or we can have this pre-fader if we leave that unchecked. Mix bus solo gives us that same option if we were wanting to listen to the mix bus pre the main fader of the mix bus, we can leave that unchecked. If we were wanting to listen to it after the AFL, we can do that as well. DCA solo AFL is actually a pretty cool function that is mostly this board has. A lot of other boards don't offer this. Now DCAs, if you watch my other videos, are a remote control to a set of inputs that are assigned to that DCA. 
it is not an audio summing source, like a mix bus would be an audio path where it actually sums a whole bunch of channels together, where a DCA is literally just remote control, like me raising the DCA up would be me taking all my fingers and assigning my fingers to the channels that are assigned into that DCA and raising all of them in an equal amount. Now, if we go ahead and click this DCA solo AFL, that means that we're actually able to listen to all the channels that that DCA is controlling. So all the inputs that are being controlled by that one DCA. So if I had all of my electric guitars on DCA3 and I went and soloed DCA3, I'd be able to listen to those three guitars. Um, so my electric guitar one, electric guitar two, and the acoustic guitar. I'd be able to listen to those in an after fader position. Position. It's like me going and soloing those three channels in an AFL configuration, which is pretty awesome. And so then the last button that we have here is our clear solo. So if we did go here and have a few items soloed and we went back to our monitor section, we can go ahead and clear the solo, which is a really quick way of just clearing the solo and giving yourself a clean slate. The talkback section uh, gives us a lot of different options here. We have our talk button, and now you'll notice that it is a latching talkback on both the talkback B and the talkback A. It is not a momentary like we have the option to on the physical console itself. So if we we're wanting to use the talkback, we can go ahead and click that, and then we can see that we are pulling um, from the talkback uh, internal mic. And if we are using an external mic, we'll go ahead and want to select the external mic. And then we also have this option of auto dim A, which basically is going to dim our monitor whenever we have our talkback enabled. So if I have this set and I'm talking over here, we can see our levels here on the monitor section are around negative 18. Now if I go and go ahead and press talk, we can go back here and see that I've dimmed by this attenuation, my monitors when I'm using my talkback, which is a pretty cool function if you're using near fields at the console. And that's also a nice function when you're using your in-ears for the monitoring. You're not going to be blowing out your ears while you're trying to talk to someone, which is great. Now our talk destination A is basically where we want to have our talkback mic go into. So we have all of our mix bus one through 16, as well of our, as our left, right, and our mono center bus. Same thing with the talkback B. So we can go and select a couple different options here and say have our talkback B be uh, seven through 16. So if we were wanting to say talk back to mix buses one through five here, and then our talk back here would be seven through 16, we can have different talk back functions. Or one way that I like to have this set up is to have talk back A going to all of the mix buses, and then talk back B go to all of the mix buses plus the left, right. And that way I have the option of doing it through the main PA or just to the band, which is a pretty cool function. The oscillator is our last tab that we have here. Now this gives us a couple different options here. We have a level of the actual oscillator going up and down. So we have from positive 10 all the way down to uh, zero. And so I'm gonna set this at negative 10. We can turn on and off the oscillator here. And then we have our destination of where we want this to actually go. So if I was wanting to put this into, say, mix bus 6, we'll see our meters up here has it going on mix bus 6, and so I can then go turn this down or turn this up. Now we have sine wave, pink noise, and white noise to, uh, selectable here. If you're tuning a system, I would suggest using pink noise. If you're trying to do some very specific measurements, I'd probably suggest using a sine wave. So with the sine wave, we have two different frequencies that we can select between. We can play one frequency at a time. You cannot play both frequencies at the same time. I wish that that was an option, but that's okay. So we can go ahead and select our frequency one right here. So we have our selection between 20 kilohertz all the way down to 20 hertz, as well as the same option for our frequency 2. So if we had a frequency 2 set at 1k and our uh, frequency 1 set at say to 150, we can go ahead and select between the two frequencies by pressing frequency 1 or frequency 2. Now we also have pink noise and we also have white noise. And then lastly, just remember that the destination is up here. We do have mix bus 1 through 16 as well as our main left right. Um, 
or main left or main right, as well as our mono and our matrix sends as well. So if you have any questions, feel free to post below. Make sure you subscribe to my channel as you'll be up to date with the most recent videos that I'm putting out on the X32. Thank you so much.